description box, by the way. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, of Appreciate course, it. of course. All right, and with that, I believe we be live, y'all. Uh, hey, everyone, <laughs> welcome to the horror show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm Andrew Mercer. I'm Susie Von Slaughter. I'm Marsh Berger. I'm Jaime and Fuego. And joining us today is another horror YouTuber out there that has also created an amazing horror Facebook group. And uh, I've been wanting to talk to him for a little while. So please introduce yourself, guest. <laughs> How is everybody doing? This is uh, Lee from Drum Dums, and uh, it's worth saying Lee from Drum Dums. But uh, yeah, it's an honor to be here. I really appreciate you having me. Of course, of course. Yeah, you know what? Um, I, I got to be honest. I got first turned on to Drum Dums uh, when I joined the Killer Flicks, and I can't remember who exactly invited me in, um, but uh, someone must have caught wind of our show and invited me in, and I think they invited Fuego in as well. Uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, I. I quickly found it to be one of my um, top two horror Facebook groups. I'm also a fan of the, the Horror Town run by Dino from the Late Late Horror Show. Uh, okay. but, I, but Killer Flicks, man, is a extraordinarily active uh, horror Facebook group, the most active one that I think I've been a part of. And that's really nice to see. It's, it's, uh, you've obviously fostered a great community uh, within Killer Flicks, and uh, so we will get to that. However, uh, the reason I wanted to bring you on is because we actually uh, just did last week a 24-hour horror crawl, a creepy channel crawl that was put together by uh, by the horror addicts. So 24 horror channels uh, in 24 hours doing an hour of live streaming. And I was like, you know what? I think after this, I want to start doing more regular spotlights on other horror tubers, especially ones that, that I'm a fan of. Yeah. And since I'm also a fan of the killer flicks, uh, Facebook group, I figured, let me reach out to Lee and see if he'd be down. And luckily he was. So, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, basically what we normally do, Lee, on the channel when we have new people is we go through their horror history. Now, I'm sure you've probably touched on aspects of it throughout many of your videos. I haven't had a chance to binge through all of them or anything like that, but I've gotten to, you know, pick and choose. I, I personally am a fan of how you did your uh, Nightmare on Elm Street ranking because it's always nice when, uh, when you know, the voice of Freddy makes an appearance and stuff like that. <laughs> or, yeah, it's always fun to do those uh, voices whenever you get the chance to. Right? Yeah, yeah. So um, so anyway, um, let's, let's jump into your horror history, okay? Uh, our first question is always, what is the first recollection you have of, you know, being your first experience with horror? You know, that's always a tough one. When you think back to your childhood, there, it's usually scattered and there's like maybe four or five different little memories. But I'd say... Most of those are horror for some reason. Um, one of them is, th I, I remember I was being babysat, and my mom was picking me up. I must have been like three, four years old, and I saw this commercial on the, the, the TV, and it was just these like white eyes. To this day, I have no idea what that movie was, <laughs> but, I, I, but I still have that memory in my head to this day. It just, and I... I I think from that moment and then, you know, seeing movies like Grizzly, uh, ah. uh, Friday the 13th Part 3, that was my first one into that series, you know, when I was like 10 years old. That was really the first one that like scared the, the, the socks off of me was Friday Part 3. So I guess that would be a good answer. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there's a couple little instances that I can remember. But, you know, it's funny. It's like other genres of, of film, I don't remember that well. Maybe... I saw Superman 2 in a theater for the first time. That was a, my first theater experience, but every other memory is, is horror. Wow. That's pretty, I mean, you know, nothing wrong with that. I, I, I have, you know, I guess I saw a lot of pop culture movies, so I do have memories of other movies and stuff, but it was definitely driven by horror. I mean, I, so I, I fully understand where that, uh, you know, where you come from on that end. Now, I think being traumatized as a youth, though, really often sticks with you a lot oh, yeah. more so mm -hmm. than being enthralled as so, a youth. I mean, the stuff that scares us sticks with us, even if mm -hmm. we return to it. And, you know, we're like, oh, that wasn't really that scary. But none, nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, uh, where did that sort of lead you? Let's, let's say, you know, springboarding from those early movies, uh, what did that make you gravitate towards within the horror genre? Because everyone tends to, you know, move towards something or other. For me at the time, it was the 80s slashers, all of the biggies. Right. Um, and then, you know, eventually I, I graduated into loving, I kind of like 
all the genres, but or all the subgenres within horror. But everyone's got their favorites. So where did you end up leaning, and uh, and you know how how did your love for the horror genre develop from there? You know, it's funny because you know that first like ten year old experience of watching Friday Part Three. Uh, it scared me away from horror for quite a few years, uh, and I remember I remember the exact scene. It was when Jason was squeezing the guy's head and his eyeball popped out, <laughs> and it, it just traumatized me. So, and my parents would not let me. My father was a Pentecostal preacher, by the way. Oh wow! Okay, so, parents, okay. Yeah, yeah. so, so that escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it did. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents wouldn't let me watch rated R movies, so I saw like Poltergeist, you know, because Poltergeist was PG stuff like that, but. The first real that like okay I'm full on in now was when I saw Halloween four when I was fifteen in the theater, you know and at that point I was old enough to where my parents left me alone to let me watch what I wanted but when I saw Halloween four in the theater it traumatized me like for weeks months maybe even years uh, the ending of it just completely just destroyed me but it made me just obsessed is that like not I, am i wrong or is that not the no no <laughs> no i always tell people it's not really jamie lloyd it's loomis that yeah. scared me yeah and that's <laughs> understandably <laughs> fuck yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so what was it? Was it was it the shape, or was it uh, what scared you so much about that? The fact that you know you could be vulnerable as a kid, or like what what about that really got you that much? I think the fact uh, that no one is safe. I think that's what was great about Halloween Four because throughout the whole movie, the main threat was Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. But then that ending, which is genius, was okay. It, it's not just Michael Myers. It could be, you know, anybody. It could be passed to anybody. So you are not safe. And I think that's the big thing that grabbed me about it. That's interesting. So that's that's a pretty large concept for a kid to grab. Like, not only could this guy kill me, but I could fucking become him if I'm not careful. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> that is a frightening thought to have. But that's, you know, that's pretty intelligent thinking for a kid, too. So <laughs> uh, now. So did that mean that you you lean towards slashers? Yeah, I think I've always been. You know, I love all all different horror subgenres. But for some reason, I don't know what it is about slashers. Maybe it's the simplicity uh, maybe I like realism in horror movies, you know, I, you know, you can see it, you can touch it and slashers, I think represents that the most. And so maybe that's why, and there's always a chance to be creative with slashers, uh, in, in the kills in the look of the slasher. Um, I think we're always on the hunt for the next slasher icon. Funny enough, we haven't really had two, none that like stand up to Freddie Michael and Jason from the eighties, which is interesting that's an interesting discussion in itself, but oh, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just slashes. I've always been drawn to them, like obsessed with them. Um, if you ever uh, are into reading scripts, let me know. I have uh, I have a good one to send you. Uh, sure. But uh, okay, cool. So now, did that love of slashers bridge into any other sort of uh, subgenres? Like, let's just go through real quick. You know, um, we could almost make it a, a lightning round before we get into the other stuff. Um, you know, let, so speed we know horror. how you feel about slasher. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I just said speed horror. Yeah, speed horror, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so let's, let's go through them then. Um, uh, paranormal. That's probably my least favorite. Really? Okay, oh, why is that? Same. Get out. You can get fired too, get out. <laughs> because I think, the, I think that paranormal for me is like the least believable, at least the way it's executed on screen most of the time. When it is executed right correctly then it's great like i mean the exorcist is, is it's so, there's a reason why the exorcist is one of the greatest horror movies of all time mm -hmm. because it 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 felt like it could really happen you know it was based on a true story or sort of a true story anyway so when i when i think they stick in the realm of you know truth and this was based on a true story then that that can help them a bit but i i don't maybe that's not the full reason i think there's just something about paranormal movies that just don't grab me like say slashers do but i think at the end of the day a good story is a good story and i will you know pet cemetery is a great example uh it's a different subgenre, but i was that story is just like that's one of my that's my favorite stephen king like adaptation i just love pet cemetery the way it affected me when i saw it as a kid was it's it's really freaky and and um zelda 
that'll just haunt your freaking dreams forever. So. Yeah, yeah, that's the scariest part in that entire movie for me is Zelda up in the oh, up yeah. in the attic. Ugh. Makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. <laughs> and, the, and the mother uh, at the end when she comes in the door and mm-hmm. the father like slaps her a fat wet one. And, then, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and her, eye, her eyeballs all goo and stuff uh, and half the face yeah. is decomposed and it's Tasha Yar from Star Trek. And, uh... no. Yeah, yeah, that, that messed me up. Oh, that, oh, that is right. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, when it comes to... So, so you're not a fan of the paranormal, but you mentioned the exorcist, so demonic then. Let's hit that. Yeah, 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 demonic. Um, and that's that's another genre where it seems like they can't get it right, and I think the main reason for that is The Exorcist. You know, I think they uh, filmmakers are constantly trying to recreate what The Exorcist did, and for some reason they fail miserably just about every time, and I think that's because of how great The Exorcist was, and everybody constantly wants to just compare it to that. So I, I, I think that it's an uphill battle. Did you watch the show? The, the show, the Exorcist show. No, no, I did not. You mm. should really give it a try. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, I will. Yeah, definitely. yeah, absolutely. Well, try, try the first season and at least get to episode five. Mm-hmm. That's that's okay. what I'll say. Um, because I think uh, I actually think that it did the movie justice way more than any of the sequels did. Mm. Um, but awesome. That's... I actually heard pretty good things about it. I'm pretty leery when it comes to television. Shows based on horror for some reason, but uh, I t- Bates Motel was actually pretty decent. See, I haven't seen Bates Motel, but I did. I did watch your Scream rankings, and I actually kind of agree with you on the the Scream series. Uh, yeah. I, I liked uh, season two better than one as well. But yeah, the only characters I really am going to miss are Noah and Audrey with the reboot. That's you know, true. they're rebooting it with Queen Latifah, right? I did. I didn't know that Queen Latifah was gonna. I knew they were rebooting it, which I was like, I'm. Re- I was oh, really yes. invested into a lot of these characters, yeah. and then for them to come back and just reboot the whole thing was kind of annoying. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, Audrey and Noah are the big losses in that show for mm. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Wait, so we're not even gonna have the same people. Queen nope. Latifah. Uh, I'm on board. Nope. Oh my Only god. <laughs> well, well, she's not in front of the camera. She's like producing. Yeah, she's producing. Oh, yeah. I'm still on it. It's gonna be a Tyler Perry thing. I don't know. Yeah, I know. They're gonna be excited. Living single. Yeah. I was all excited they were finally getting into the the Brandon. What I forget the last name. Brandon Brandon James. James. Yeah, they were finally bringing Brandon James. I was like, finally we can get to the to the. That's another thing right there too. We'll never find out. You know the whole Brandon James. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless they make it into a comic book, I guess. Yeah, which could happen. They've they've been doing a lot of comic book continuations of shows. Mm -hmm. Have you watched, uh, I know we're a little sidetracked, but, you know, it's a horror show, so what the fuck. Have you watched Hannibal? Yes. um, I I saw, I don't know if I saw the last season, actually, but, yeah, that's a a really good show. That's a great horror show. To be able to replace Anthony Hopkins is no easy feat. Absolutely. uh, I think they they did a really good job with uh, Mads Mikkelsen. 100%. 100%. Okay, so... Well, well, hold up. I have to ask uh-oh. the obvious question then, since you're in Georgia, bro. Walking Dead. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Um, You know, this last... I the, the season before this last one, I had pretty much given up. Because I... It was... To me, it felt like it was just repeating the same story over and over in different ways. Oh, yeah. And I had almost... I'd, I'd given up, really. And then my wife... Uh, th- this next season had run its course, and I was I was fine with that. And then my wife was like, "Hey, why aren't we watching Walking Dead?" Because we always do the Amazon season pass. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Because I don't want to watch the stupid show." <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, "Well, we're watching it." And I was like, "Yes, dear." So <laughs> it, good, good, good response. It. it was good. I will say this last season they grabbed they grabbed me again. So, so yeah, I guess I was wrong. Wait, I mean, this season they're shooting right now, or yeah, they're halfway yeah, through well, right now. Now that. Now, was there a new episode, um, what's today, Sunday? It's on it's tonight. On today. Tonight is the second Oh, it's on second tonight. Half. Yeah. Tonight's the second half. After this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Carl. I know I have to wait until I go home. Oh. Wah, wah. I, I haven't even, I watched the first episode of this season, and I haven't watched any since. Same with Supernatural. They, so. they, is Carl going to go through the whole one. season as a zombie? I hope so, because uh, that, that's going to be I a surprise. I saw like the first two episodes, uh, and I'm like, so. peace. <laughs> I would recommend binging this season. It was interesting the way they structured and, this and season, though, right? Summer. With the jumping around in the gotcha. timeline and everything. I mean, I thought that was actually okay. No. <laughs> no. I would binge it. Um, I say that because, like all the other Walking Dead seasons, when you binge it, it's just that much 
better because you can see the whole picture without having to wait week by week. Because yeah. when you do it week by week, it's so slow. Yeah. And you're like, maybe that's something come to on. it too because I've never binged the uh, the last few seasons, and yeah. I'm, maybe that is part of my problem. Like if I would have went back and just binged them, I probably would have liked them better. I found uh, I found that it works a lot better when you binge them because season two, I hated it until I rewatched it, and I'm like, okay, now this makes sense because when you put them back to back, yeah. It it moves a lot quicker. You get it makes more sense. You're not. I I binged season two. I remember uh, and I loved it. Like everybody said, they hated season two, but I actually liked it, especially what they did with Shane. Mm. In the end. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on to what's a what's a subgenre? Oh, uh, creatures. Hell, how can we forget yeah, creatures? Yeah, that's our favorite creature <laughs> subgenre. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, one of the first movies. Well, I mentioned Grizzly. Um, mm -hmm. Grizzly really freaked me out, and I don't remember that movie to this day because I've watched it since. <laughs> but uh, of course, Jaws, and my, I think I had a love affair with King Kong 1976. Oh, okay. Because that was right around you know when I was uh, I was think I was three when King Kong came out, and Kong kind of scared me a bit. You know, he was pretty freaky, and he was a little freakish with uh, Jessica with, Lang. Uh, Jessica oh. Lang, yeah, he had her in his hand, and he's kind of fondling her and stuff, and <laughs> that was kind of weird. <laughs> fair fair point yeah um, so i've always been a big fan of uh king kong 1976 obviously for nostalgic reasons but also the score by john barry is is like really haunting so but i love creature features i was just talking to you guys about the ritual that just came out i love a good creature feature yeah for right. sure now do you do you like what they're doing with the uh the giant creatures now with uh you have your cloverfield you have uh your pacific rims and then you of course have uh the reboots you have godzilla uh with the sequel coming out you have kong skull island and then you're gonna have a crossover movie between the two how, how do you feel about how they're doing now you know all these these new creature feature type movies that are mainstream like pacific rim it's you know it's there like i don't get freaking crazy about it and say oh my god day one i can't wait you know like la just last night i saw um uh, Annihilation and the trailer that they played mm. before it was for the new Pacific Rim, and I was just you know I was just thinking okay this it it looks like the last Pacific Rim I'll, I might go watch it and I might have a good time with it but when it when they concern like horror then I really get on board I love horror creature feet, like straight up horror uh, and I'm not gonna give you any spoilers but I would definitely check out Annihilation Sweet. <laughs> it's, it's done yeah. as my one of the most anticipated for the entire year I mean the, oh, the, uh, the, the work he's done like, in the past, I mean. I wasn't even that, like, that excited for Annihilation, just based on the trailer. I love Alex Garland, and he's one of those directors, like, every time a movie comes out by him, I'm like, okay, I'll go see it, and then I see it, and then I fall in love with it. So that's the way Annihilation was. After I saw it, it jumped to the top of my list for the year, like, mm. best of. Nice. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, all right, and uh, let's see. Are there any subgenre? Oh, how about true life horror, like um, serial killer stuff, and not not slasher, but like you know, yeah. Zodiacs and stuff like that. Ted Bundy. Well, Zodiac happens to be one of my favorite films of all time. Oh, um, a big a big reason for that is uh, David Fincher. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's one of those genres that it seems like a lot of times you go to the or back in the day when you go to the video store you'd see a lot of those serial killer type movies but it's like a lower budget like they didn't have the funds to make it like you know like a David Fincher style mm -hmm. uh, serial killer movie so uh, I, it's hit and miss for me when they do it right it's great when they don't do it right I avoid it. That's fair. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's see. Are, am I missing any other subgenres within within horror? Well, I mean, I clown. Guess you're, you're, you're clown. Okay, like yeah, sure. Vampire. We can call clown a subgenre. <laughs> sure. Like it's kind that. of a subgenre, right? Yeah, at, at this, this point, point yeah. I would say mm -hmm. so. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you think about clown? Clown, clown stuff. Clowny. I loved. I loved uh, the it. Like, would you call that a remake? I know people get pissed. No, off it was a I new adaptation. You thank you adaptation. Yeah. I, yeah, I loved it. I loved what uh, Bill Skarsgård did with uh, Pennywise. But the big thing is, I, I liked the kids in it. It was really good. Yeah. Uh, clown genre or subgenre is another one that I I kind of like avoid, hmm. and not for it's just I, I think it's just an interest thing. Hmm. Like you got to be. I, I don't know what it is about clowns, but I just don't gravitate towards them. But it was really good, so that that is the exception. I recently watched the TV show for the first time with Cody Leach. Actually, we mm -hmm. both he grew up with it. This was my first watch, so we both reviewed it at the same time. Mm -hmm. And um, it it I loved the first half of it. The second half was whew, yeah. Angel. 
Yeah. He struggled. <laughs> Agreed, Struggle, especially yeah. the ending, man. The ending is brutal with the spider. Yeah. Honestly, for, for clown wow. stuff, though, I have to recommend John Watts, the director of uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. He did a movie called Clown, yeah, produced by good. Eli Roth, which is actually damn good. I recommend that. that. Oh, wait, did you, have you, have have you seen that one at all? It, that's where the... Um, Lee, the, 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 it's about a guy who, finds uh, a costume. yeah, he finds a costume in an attic and, uh, because, uh, his kid's having a birthday party and the clown they ordered doesn't show up and he finds this costume in the attic and when he puts it on, he can't take it off and he slowly starts to transform into this like grotesque <laughs> clown creature. It's really what fucking cool. Hunger. That sounds pretty interesting, just the premise alone. Yeah, yeah. it's it's really, it's really awesome. Check it out. There's a hunger for children. Is it on Netflix right now? Oh, man. I don't know if it streams right now or not. I but, don't know, but, but it's worth it's worth yeah, getting your hands on. I I actually bought it, um, so it was yeah, fantastic. The scene in the play place, dude. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's great. Oh, yeah. Um, also, uh, quality one. If you get a chance, um, once it becomes available, is the Night Watchman. That's about uh, a bunch of clown vampires that invade, like, an office building. Um, you had me a clown vampire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. a good one. Um, that was a hilarious movie, actually. What's that so. one called again? Uh, the Night Watchman. Yeah. Night Watchman. Yeah, because it's, it's basically super troopers, except it's Night Watchmen that have to protect an office building from clown vampires. Yeah. It's not the Russian movie, is it? No. 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 Um, no, this is, this is a, but, but the reason I don't know where it's at is because we saw it at a film festival like two years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. almost, yeah, almost. Um, and so I still haven't, I, maybe it is available on Amazon. I'm not sure. Anyway, sure. it's worth Everything checking out. Is available on Amazon. Um, so I like oh, that you've on. got a director's chair with your name on it, by the way. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, all right. So clowns, uh, what about killer clowns from outer space? You did see that. I'm hoping. I have never seen. Wow, oh, you are know, fired, right? my friend. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't do okay, it. dream aborted. Yeah, and that's it. Goodbye. Bye. All right. Um, maybe awful. Cody's awful. seen it. Um, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you you should definitely uh, as as a personal request from me, I think you should watch Killer Don't Clowns. Don't watch it. Fuck you. <laughs> Why? It's awful. It's amazing. Well, it's There's the vision in the ranks. So man. You, well, maybe so. here's the thing. It might be one of those movies. It's not no. as bad as it, as far as this goes, but it might be one of those movies that if you watched it when you're younger, it had much more impact. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you watch it first when you were older or younger, Marshall? Older. Yeah, see, that might be why. Older. Older. <laughs> so, so I have a transition then. So okay. since we've pretty much covered all the subgenres yep. of, uh, of horror, are there any other mediums you like for your horror, whether it's like a comic book or a video game or anything like that, either currently Novel. or when you were younger? VHS. That's kind of a big thing that I'm into right now. I, I um, noticed I you like have that playlist, man. Yeah, yeah, I like going back and watching a whole, you know, those classics on VHS every now and then. It's fun. Do you do any like um, any like reading of, of horror comics or novels, or do you play any horror games or anything like that? No, um, actually, I don't, uh, and I think maybe maybe it's I don't have the time to do it as much. Mm -hmm. um, really? I don't know. I just I've always been, I guess into movies and cinema that's that's kind of my big thing you know and i've never ventured into like comic books and and whatnot um yeah I, 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 maybe it's because of my childhood i never looked at comics that much and maybe it just never carried over hmm. mm. well, right. well i have another question then yeah. this is another thing that i do know you're into because we share a similar passion sir uh when i saw that we were talking to lee lee lee, lee, lee we're talking fucking lee i know you play drums man i play drums yeah. as well and so, oh, awesome. yeah. And so, as far as musical passion then goes, um, was there any? I, I mean, I I had a Reformed Baptist upbringing, and so my dad's a Bible teacher and all this stuff, so I can feel you on that. But yeah. were you like into darker metal or more like dangerous kind of scary punk or music of any of, of you know anything of that nature, or just not so much? Um, I started playing drums like in tenth grade. And uh, the big, I think the big thing back then for me was like hair metal. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, was, I was listening to like Motley Crue and you know all those bands. And I started, get, I started getting into like uh, Tool was my favorite band of all time. Yeah, I think yeah, that's when yeah. I, yeah, that's when I took drums seriously. When I heard Danny Carey play, Carey, and I, I was like, oh, you can do different things with this instrument. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so, but I listen to all different types of music. If it's got good drumming in it, I'm using like I'm into hardcore music my son's a massive hardcore fan he was in a hardcore band actually uh for a few years so i listened to everything from like under oath to as i dying to tool to 80s metal i like a lot of it actually cool cool, cool. 
All right. Well, uh, well, let's transition into some uh, into some stuff that I know people are curious about. Uh, okay. Do you have a? Was there like a, a passion reason to start uh, drum dums, or or uh, was it more like a hobby to record? Um, you know your opinions and stuff on videos. I think it was a fear thing. Like I've always, like, I've always been into conquering fears, mm. and public speaking has always been a big one for me. Even I was in the military for twenty four years, and that's something that I struggled with. Even when I, and I had you know, but it was one of those things like feet to the fire. You had to do it. You didn't have a choice. So I love movies. Like it's like my number one passion. And I'd always wanted to discuss film, but the thought of it just scared the crap out of me. Hmm. And then I discovered this whole community on YouTube, and they, they, were, they were, these were people like me, you know, like you. And, and they were talking about movies, and they were doing it well. And I, that, you know, that just, it seduced me. And so I thought if, um, if I buy the equipment then maybe I'll do it because I don't like wasting things. So <laughs> I ended yeah, I ended up buying like a Canon camera, a nicer Canon camera, and some lights and stuff like that. Because if I didn't do that stuff, I probably wouldn't have done it. You know, mm-hmm. I because I, I did try to record a video on my phone uh, like six months before I really took it seriously and it was horrible. And I just <laughs> <laughs> I deleted it immediately. And it took me six months to actually jump back in and say, Okay, I bought this equipment now Let's sit down and let's try this for real and see how it works. And if you go back and watch my first video, it's, you can tell I'm scared <laughs> shitless. It was it was rough. Yeah, you know, I think I there was just a little. I was it was 95 percent scared to death, and I'll never do this again. But there was still that five percent there that was like, you know what? There was something so cool about that, and I just want to keep doing it. So mm-hmm. and I just I just kept doing it, and every time I did it, I looked at the last video and I just tried to learn from it. I learned from other YouTubers. And, uh, you know, it's funny. It's like I've done, like, I don't know, maybe 700 videos now. I still get scared sitting in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Me <like> too. <laughs> yeah, right? It's, I can't watch myself. I've, like, never seen any of my episodes. I can't do it. It's hard for me to do that, too. I can't go back and watch uh, too many of my videos. I, I usually go back and give it, like, a once-over just to make sure I didn't, like, technically mess something up. But then after that, I'm done with it. I just, you know, I move forward. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing. You gotta, you gotta be. Um, you can be economical and crafty when it comes to being a YouTuber that's been around for as long as we have, because you started only about four months after us. And that is that now you can literally make an episode out of you going back and reacting to some of your original content that is horrific. <laughs> like that's what that's we're right. we're actually going to start doing. That I want to start doing um, some commentary on some of our early oh, comedy God. sketches. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think we'll have. I think we might actually record the first one tonight. Now that I just remembered that, oh, because God. I think it's going to be a really fun series of episodes uh, for yeah. us. So. Or whatever. Scream um, Queen School. Cause... Scream Queen School. Yeah. Okay, all, all it's those. funny because I've actually had the same thought like i might go back and, re- and uh just react to a, a couple of my maybe one or two of my early videos because there's a couple of them that you, you look at the guy in that video and he is you can tell he is petrified <laughs> so that'd be kind of fun to go back and rewatch that and see <laughs> yeah just commentate on it you know pause yeah, it yeah, pause yeah. it at a particular time you're like yep i think that's where i shit my pants <laughs> <laughs> exactly. um okay uh, Susie, what, what do you got next okay so lee where did the name of your channel come from? Like, how did you come up with it? Obviously drumming, but... <laughs> yeah, it's... You know, I think it was like... Sometimes stupidity works out well, <laughs> is, is what I like to say. Um, I Originally, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm, a pa- I'm really passionate about drums. Mm. And so, it wasn't going to be a drumming channel. It was, gonna be, it, it was always going to be a, a movie review channel. But I thought, if I could throw drums in there and maybe throw in, like, drum covers every now and then... Uh, so I, I said drums, and I, but I could not for the life of me think of anything. I was going to call it like drum reviews or, you know, something. I couldn't, I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. And then all of a sudden, I think the word came to me by accident because uh, I said, this is dumb or something. <laughs> and, then, and then it just came out, drum dumbs. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> I, I went on to Twitter. I went on to Facebook. I went on to Instagram. Nobody had the name Drum Dumbs, obviously, yeah. and so I grabbed it all. Gotcha. There you go. I'll, I'll bet if you had gone Dumb Drums, it would have been taken. But Drum Dumbs works. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And there's well, a there's fun... the Dumb Dumbs lollipop, and everybody. A lot of people think that I got it from Dumb Dumbs lollipops, and that that even uh, the picture that I sent you has Drum Dumbs with the lollipops. I love yeah, that graphic, by the way. 
Yeah, yeah. Woody Bowen, he created that design. He thought I came up with that because of the lollipop <laughs> design. And I was like, this is great, Woody, but I didn't come up with, name, with my name because of the lollipop design, but can I still use this? Yeah, <laughs> fucking roll with that shit. Be like, yep, that's what I meant. <laughs> sure thing. Um, cool. All right. Um, Marsha, do you have something? All right. Um, so... We, can you let everybody know what uh, Killer Flicks is? And did that come before Drum Dumbs or after? No, no, that came after. Uh, July of 2016 is when I started Killer Flicks. Um, another YouTuber who's a good friend of mine, uh, Mariana from Impress and Blend, uh, we would chat from time to time, and she, you know, she, would, uh, she sent me a message saying, um, we should start a horror group. Uh, because she had been looking at other horror groups, and uh, for, for, for some reason or another, nothing was like, she wanted something for the community, I guess. Mm. And so she was thinking, why don't we start a horror group? Uh, and she, she was like, better, why don't you start it? <laughs> I was like, why don't you start it? <laughs> and so uh, I created the, the, the site that day, thinking nothing of it, you know, ah. just on a whim, and I thought maybe I'll get, you know, 100 people, you know, people from the community. And then all of a sudden, it just started growing and growing and growing. And now we're like almost 3,000 members. Wow. Uh, Dang. So, yeah. But, I mean, I created it basically for horror fans. And uh, not just people, not, not just my subscribers, but just horror fans in general, you know. But I didn't want it to be populated with just anybody. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I created this whole, like, three-question thing. So that way, it, the people that are there want to be there. You know? Right. Like, you know, and so I think that's a big reason why it's worked so well so far. I mean, a lot of the people in there, they feel like, I hate to use this word, but they feel like family to me. You know, mm. it's, it's weird. <laughs> no, I agree. I think it's a, it's a really great community that you've fostered. Um, I don't know if it's because of the three-question test or whatever, but it's uh, everyone that's there seems to want to be there. And we don't, you don't seem to have you know, a whole lot of trolls running around, you know, shitting on everyone's stuff. So yeah. we got uh, some pretty vibrant personalities in there. And I think though, the, I think that kind That's of, uh, it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like a virus and it just kind of expands out. Uh, like Dylan Clancy, he's my co-admin and me and him just hit it off really quick. And he's just like the nicest guy that you could ever talk to. He's, he's the most supportive guy that you could ever talk to. And I think that it was just infectious to everybody. And so, and we like to get involved, you know. I think some moderators or some creators, admins, sometimes they don't get involved as much as they should. And I, I genuinely like getting in there and discussing things, you know, letting people know about things, finding out about new movies. I'm just that type of person, and I think that I think that maybe that helps. Yeah, I saw that you you actually do a little bit of that um, on your channel as well. Like you just did the coverage of Halloween when we got the picture of Nick Castle as the shape. Yeah. So. Um, I, I dig that you, you know, you go where your passion is within horror. You're like, oh, you know what? I think someone should talk about this, so I'm going to make a video about it. You know, I think that's, right. that's yeah, the way we should do YouTuber, YouTube, you know? Yeah. Yeah, as a YouTuber, you don't want to, you don't want to be fake. You know, you want to go in uh, and be passionate about whatever you're talking about. And so when I first started my channel, um, it wasn't like that for me. When I first started, I was like, uh, okay, I think I need to like review the new movies that come out every week. That'll be successful, right? <laughs> Not no, it wasn't. Uh, but quickly, I I'm such a fan of horror that quickly I just gravitated towards what I wanted to watch, and I I was like, okay, I'm going to review the Halloween series. These are going to get no views. Boy, was I wrong. Mm. How I I always credit Halloween for the uh, success of my channel because before I uh, reviewed the Halloween series, I wasn't getting any views whatsoever. And I thought, you know, I did it because I love that series so much and I wanted to talk about it. And I didn't think anybody would watch it. And I noticed after I after I get into like my fifth review of the series, those previous reviews just kept growing and growing and growing. And I was like, wait, maybe there's something here. And so it was Halloween that made me say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do mostly horror because that's what I want to talk about anyway. And I see, it seems like I'm getting more views with that anyway. So, yeah, it was kind of a, a happy accident. Nice. Yeah. Okay, Fuego, yeah. you got something? Yeah, and so uh, I, I know that you have your, your watches, which is the reviews, obviously, but then you also have a few other things that are a slight bit different that I saw that you do. You have the drive segment where, yeah. um, you know, you're either going to, like, buy something or just kind of chilling in traffic or whatever, but then you also have, uh, I'm trying to remember, you've got your stream that you do. It's uh, Scream Stream, right? 
<laughs> it's hard. Yeah, I have way too many <laughs> things going on in my channel. Oh, so do we. Just, we can relate. So. <laughs> oh, I've, I've looked at your channel, I, and I think that's great. You know, I get bored quickly with things. Um, I, I always say reviews are my bread and butter, but uh, I, I love venturing out and trying different things. Watches is that isn't actually a review. It's more of a, kind of a hybrid between a review and a commentary because I select certain scenes of a movie. I watch them in real time, and I discuss that scene while I'm doing it. That's that, and watches kind of came out by accident too because I, I was doing like just a Halloween marathon. I watched like six Halloween movies in a day, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna document this. I'm just gonna talk maybe for a minute about each movie, and it, that video was really successful. And so I thought, and it was fun. So I was like, maybe I'll try this again. So I did it with the Friday, a couple of Friday movies, and so now I'll do it like maybe once a month. I'll I'll just pick a movie and just do it. But uh, it, it those videos take a lot of time because they're like half an hour at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but and then Screen Stream. Um, That's your weekly thing, right? The, what's that? That's your weekly thing, right? Well, it's it it started out as a weekly thing. Now yeah. it's more of like a monthly thing. Just okay. Because. I think my move. I I moved to Florida recently, like a couple a couple months ago. Oh wow! Okay. And yeah, and that that got in the way of my scream streams. So we still do them uh, like maybe once a month. I do them with Cody Leach, CP from All I Like It Reviews, and Brian Lomax uh, have been like the current lineup. But uh, we have a we have a, a good time. We usually pick a topic, we talk about it, and they're usually around two hours. And then uh, we'll talk about horror news and whatnot, stuff like that. But I like doing that. I like doing podcasts and streams. It, to me, that's just fun. Nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, Andrew, you got one? Uh, do you have like a, an overall goal as a horror YouTuber? Uh, anything that you're really looking to achieve um, in doing all of this? Um, you know, I've never ha I've, like I've never been like I want 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> That's never been the goal. Uh, I've all, my mentality is when it stops being fun, I'll stop doing it. Yeah. And it just hasn't stopped being fun yet. More based on passion than uh, any, yeah, it's, anything it's a passion else. Yeah, it's passion. And I never expected it to be successful, really. And it's been kind of, it, it's it's surreal, you know? It's, it's weird. When it, something you love doing is successful, you almost feel like, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? These aren't supposed to go hand in hand. Why am I loving this and... Yeah. yeah exactly yeah and it's small scale success but you know i guess it's success of, of the mind like i I'm, I'm enjoying it i'm I'm enjoying that people are liking what i'm talking about and people do get passionate about what you i've had people get really mad at me because of my opinion of a certain movie oh yeah and i've had that <laughs> yeah. uh, marcia marcia was the only dissenter in our because we did basically stephen king's it week when the new one came out um yeah. we reviewed the the book we reviewed the old series we reviewed the new movie um both regular spoiler and then i think again we reviewed it with a couple of other members of the show mm -hmm. we did the it vr experience and in that whole time the only dissenting opinion about the new movie was marcia and my god <laughs> we have never seen such vitriolic hate <laughs> For a female character or a female <laughs> host uh, that we saw for that. Like, yeah. it was crazy how many people were like, I'm two minutes in and I'm out. Fuck this bitch. Like, it's, yeah, it was, it, it was I know awesome. people, people wrote, like, just on that, uh, my recent video for the Scream ranking, um, I think it was the Scream ranking, somebody was like, um, how could you have this movie before this movie? Are you, are you stupid? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Something to that effect, yeah. and it's just funny that people take their opinions as, like, fact. Yeah. You know, oh I, I find God. that interesting. But the fact that somebody's actually taking the time to watch my video mm -hmm. and comment to me that, hey, I don't like that you like this because of this, even to me, that's all, as long as they're not trolling, I, I, I like getting in there and having a discussion with people about it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And honestly, yeah. they those fans those viewers rather can become some of the most loyal fans mm -hmm. because they oh, like absolutely. coming back to see what you have to say and then you know even if they hate what you say every time they're still going to come back because they're engaged and invested because you engage them and passionate mm -hmm. yeah. also obviously mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know what I, I, it's, it's quite it's so funny people are like you know we we got a troll that was like hitting us with like a ton of dislikes for every video for like a week 
and yeah. uh, you know we were at first i was like oh no and then i'm like oh wait youtube likes engagement no matter if it's pluses or yep. minuses yeah. <laughs> so i'll take the likes and dislikes guys they're all good for us they like it's crazy us. it means you know it's that old saying you know um if they love you or hate you that's fine they're into you yeah. you know yeah. what i mean that like person, they're yeah. they're engaged you know mm -hmm. so i think paul stanley from kiss said if you, uh, uh if you love us great if you hate us that's great too if you're in the middle get the fuck out <laughs> <laughs> yeah but there's something like the last jedi showed us fan rage is real on the internet right oh, it's now real. it's crazy <laughs> fucking the session sauce showed us oh, that <laughs> and you know what it's coming back i know it is they're finally bringing it back full time that session sauce um, oh that's one of my reviews that like i had people because i liked the last jedi and i had people just like calling me like the worst thing dude i liked, I liked it too I liked like it too. Yeah. there were aspects i didn't like but overall it might have been like the most entertaining star wars to me well yeah i really i mean it had problems here and there but overall i enjoyed the hell out of it actually. the fact that i saw they did the Luke. yeah oh really oh that's a surprise i did not um i did <laughs> however i did like the fact that they showed me something that in all of my years, uh, you know, 30 years, um, <laughs> I, I got to see something that I had never seen in a space movie when they, yep. like, hyperdrive rammed into the fleet of ships. And I was mm -hmm. like, fuck, yes, I always wondered what would happen if something was in front of them when they, you know, <laughs> hyperjumped like that. In all the shows, Star Wars, Star yeah, Trek, Battlestar boy. Galactica, I always wanted to know what would happen if someone was right in front of them. Like, I imagine the computers map the courses so that doesn't happen, but we finally got to see what happens. And the fact that they presented it in all of its glorious silence mm -hmm. was really amazing. Yeah. What's cool to me is like everybody forgets that I think all the Star Wars movies have things that you can pick apart. You know, oh, yeah. none of them are like perfect, except for Empire Strikes Back, maybe. But Rick and Morty the rest is pretty of the perfect movies, as far I mean, as sci-fi goes. At least this new movie had balls to to yeah. take some risks and <laughs> maybe agree. maybe make us think about the Force in a different way that we thought about it before. Don't stop boosting like his that. ego now. Holy shit! No, no, I just agree. <laughs> like, I yep. agree with him. I like the fact that I agree with him, all right? What can I say? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't uh, always happen with my guests. I don't know. I thought there was a lot of missed opportunities in the last movie. I, want, I felt like it was anticlimactic and that they had opportunities to do something really cool and different, and then they backtracked about, out of it. Well, they did. Yeah, he, like, he, he basically reversed a lot of JJ's setups. <laughs> That's kind of Which is what upset so many people. Like but JJ's kind of coming back them. to like reset them all. Like It's very easy to have Kylo yeah. Ren have lied to Ray and you know about her parentage like I that's very I do cool. like what's going on with like Kylo Ren and Ray though like those two were the most interesting thing about the last yeah, I wish it was yeah. Like and people are so pissed about Ray's <laughs> parentage not being special and I'm like he could have very easily lied you to know? her to try and get her to join the yeah. bad side I mean like you know I mean, so uh, the, the bad side I, said the just bad side. About I think I mean the dark second. side but okay I saw this movie in the theater twice and the first time I was I, I, I didn't really like what they did with Luke the first time. Nope, and then neither. when I saw it the second time, I, I, I guess I got it. Like, I under, like Luke would be in a completely different place at this point in yeah. his life than he was at, at the end of Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. And so once I was able to step back and just take a look at it from a different angle, it, it kind of worked for me, actually. Yeah, and I actually didn't mind Super Leia, so I was okay That'd with that. <laughs> now, Mary I did Poppins have Leia. <laughs> you did have a problem with that? Well, I, I don't deny that she has, you know, the force, of course. And I just think it's the way the scene the plays yeah, out. I was like, going to say, that this horse has the force, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Mr. Ed was floating in space. I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's veer this ship back onto the horror seas here. <laughs> Susie, do you have another question for me? I'm actually very curious. Before you actually started your own channel, was there any were there any other channels that perhaps influenced you? Wink, wink. Just kidding. Just kidding. Totally kidding. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. No, no, uh, no. I, yeah, uh, when I was, it's funny, when I was in Afghanistan back in 2012. Thank you for I your service, watching. by the way. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah, that. Um, I, that's when I started watching YouTube. And being the movie fan that I am, I, you know, I, I noticed Jeremy Johns, like his videos grabbed me. I think when I saw his videos, I was like, oh, that's, he's got a different approach. And he seemed like a normal guy, and that was one of my influences. So, and then I caught, but the big influence I think for me was we watched a movie when I, mm. 
I discovered I discovered them around 2012 as well, and I was just hooked. Like these guys, I want to I want to freaking hang with them. That's that's the way it was for, and so and I'm like friends with them now, which is weird because I was watching them three years before I even started my channel. <laughs> wow, <laughs> but, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's strange. Like I'm pretty decent friends with them now. We're actually talk, talking about doing a, a Halloween podcast together. <laughs> oh, right on, so, cool. Um, yeah, those were like my main like influences. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Marsha, do you have something? Um, so we know you like to go back to the old classics and watch those VHS tapes, but uh, how do you feel about current horror? Like, do you think the movies that are coming out now are holding up to par, taking it to the next level, or do you just not care much for it? What are your thoughts? Oh, sure. I, I think 2016 was a really, uh, a really good year for horror, mm -hmm. uh, with movies like Green Room. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my memory's like fading right now, but... I just remember 2016 was a good year. 2017 was a good year for horror. Uh, I loved movies like The Witch. Uh, this year we got movies like A Quiet Place that's coming out. That looks really interesting. Oh, I'm so excited, excited about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's that's still not a lot of horror movies it? out there. So, yeah. <laughs> What's that, Marcia? It's not A24, is it? it no, no, that no. one's not A24. Okay, no. we're good. Okay. Oh, we're good. I love yeah. A24. I'm no, it looks good. Oh, yeah, A24. No. It looks good. It looks good. Um, yeah, A Quiet Place is actually, it might be my most anticipated at Directed this point. Directed by John Krasinski, too. So excited about that yeah. fucking movie. The Strangers 2, that's another one I'm really looking forward to. Ooh, that could be good, that could be good. It could be good, yeah, it could be bad, could, too. could be good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't have Bert Bertino coming back to direct, which is the one thing that's Yeah, that's true. So. Yeah. Um, okay, and then, uh... Let's see. So I can see we... a fan question. Yeah, how about a fan yeah. I was actually going to say. I, I think for the rest of it, let's just uh, let's yeah. go to the comments at this point. Yeah, I saw okay. one fan um, wanting to know about your experience with Stranger Things. I don't. Know. Have you yeah. watched it? Have I? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've watched both seasons. I was in the show. <laughs> yeah, that was his experience on the show. Oh, Stranger Things. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I mean, wow. I didn't Cecil's finish fine. that. I'm, I'm looking at comments, uh, too. You know, I apologize. Most people don't even know bad, that. But, bad host. Um, Go ahead. There's a small group out there that know I was in it. But, um, wow. I, li I lived over in uh, Georgia for like three years, and I did extra work in the past. I was an extra in the Avengers. You can't see me, but I'm in there. <laughs> um, Hell yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and that was when I lived over in uh, New Mexico, and they were shooting that in Albuquerque. So I was always, like, looking for, but my wife actually gets me, like, extra work. Like, she got me the extra work on uh, Stranger Things. She saw, I think she saw an ad or something that they were, they were looking for extras. And so they sent me an email uh, because of my military. I think they, wanted, they were looking for, like, a military-type presence or something like that. Mm. And so I showed up. Uh, on set, and I was actually in the first season in episode three, and I was in the last episode of uh, season two. Okay. Uh, the uh, the uh, the guard that's locking the gate at the very end of episode two, and then he flips the bird to the guy leaving in the jeep. That was me. Oh, oh shit! Okay. Watch that episode. Yeah, now I got. I've been wanting to rewatch the last episode of two anyway because yeah. I was yeah. kind of in and out of it. But that was a cool ass experience, by the way. Really? <laughs> Did you get to meet I, everybody yeah. or? No, they don't let you talk to anybody, but I will say, like, Sean Astin, because uh, they had, like, the actor's little waiting room, green room, mm -hmm. uh, right next to where the extras were sitting for the day. And so Sean Astin would walk by, and then Winona Ryder, who I had a massive crush on when I was growing up, I was just like, oh, my yep. God, there's my solid crush. She's standing right there. Wow. I wanted to, like, jump out and attack her, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> Probably a bad idea. What, what was your crush from, Reality Bites or Beetlejuice? Um, or, or Heathers. Or Heathers. Huh. Heathers, Heathers was a good though, one. Really? Uh, yeah. Lucas was a good one. Okay. Yeah. Um, I grew up with Banana Rider. I think we're close close to the same age, actually. So. Ah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, all right. Well, let's let's check with some of the comments. Let's shout out some of these commenters. Cody Leach is here. Uh, Lee, what's your favorite video that you've made? That's a good question. Mm. Man, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, while you think, go ahead and think for just a second while I shout some names here. All right, we got Anthony Kulik. We got 55 Bueller saying, Horror Show and Drum Dums, this is awesome. Uh, Sam Power is here. Sam Power. Horror Miser Monty G, of course, yeah, was yeah, part Monty. of the Creepy Crawl with us. Uh, Ray Animator is here. Yo, yo, Ray. We got uh, Stephen G. Atkins Studios. Uh, then we got Beth S. We got Dylan Thomas. We got Rubber Soul. What yes. up? We miss you, bro. We miss Rubber Soul. Ben Grimm is here. 
Uh, uh, moving right along, moving right along, nah, moving, nah, nah, moving nah, nah, right nah. along, moving right along. Um, a lot yeah. of good people. Yeah, 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 a lot of good people. So, all right, that's enough of time. You, your exactly. Jeopardy music is up. What's your answer? <laughs> okay, um, I guess there's a couple answers. Uh, I recently reviewed Zodiac, and I was pretty proud of that one. Um, Did you review the extended cut or the theatrical? Yeah, yeah, the extended cut. So I, good, that's man. the only cut that I think I've ever watched, actually. Oh, really? Yeah I, yeah, I saw the original in theaters, and remember, that was before Robert Downey had his comeback tour with Iron Man, but it was, like, right before. Yeah. And, I actually yeah. mentioned that in my review, too. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr. Was, was like at that time was kind of a washed up actor because of his problems, his personal issues. Yeah, was, but he he turns in like one of the best performances in the movie. Yeah, that mm-hmm. and Kiss 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 Bang yeah, Bang kiss, kiss, about bang, bang. the same time were both great performances from him. And they're like, this guy still got it. He could still yeah. be a star. Oh, yeah, he's, and he's one of the best, actually. Yeah, and, and, and then another video would be um, CP from Well I Like It Reviews. Uh, he was one of the guys that I met when I first started my channel and. We started this thing called Horror Needs a Hero, where we w- we would talk about um, slasher icons and why uh, it's like why we don't have Fre- Freddie, Michael, and Jason today. Like why why can't they repeat that formula today? So and we started this whole series and we just called it Horror Needs a Hero, and a, a lot of those videos are like freaking thirty minutes long. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm I'm looking anytime we jump back into that, it's always a, a pretty good product. So yeah. Um, ben Grimm asked, uh, let's see, uh, are trauma movies, cons- could, could trauma, mo- trauma movies be considered a subgenre? Trauma movies. The, the real, real bad. I was like, what's a trauma? Yeah, like, that, that's kind of how you associate role, really, uh, really low budge, yeah. kind of, you know. Trauma yeah. movies traumatize me, but they're really okay. <laughs> quality sometimes, but when they're fun, I mean, I don't know. What do you think about the trauma flicks? Honestly, Avenger, I haven't watched that. There's, there's a few Mai, subgenres um, that I'm like just now getting into, like uh, Jalo films with uh, you know Dario Argento and Mario Bava. I'm like obsessed with those now, mm. and I just recently started getting into them. Uh, thanks to Killer Flex and Dylan Clancy, he's a big Jalo fan. Me and him chat all the time. But hmm. I like I re- I reviewed um, Tenebrae and I reviewed Suspiria, and I love that genre. But trauma films, it's not something I've really jumped into quite yet. Okay. Well, well a, you don't need to rush to it. It's a super <laughs> schlocky studio. I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with like the Toxic Avenger and yeah, yeah, Tromeo and yeah. Juliet and crap like that. Their, their stuff is real cheese, man. Some people love it mm-hmm. and some people don't. So, um, I like bad horror, though, you know? Like really cheesy bad horror movies. Or, <laughs> There's plenty like, of them. I, I watched uh, this movie for the first time called Rocktober Blood with uh, the horror addicts, and I had a blast with it. It's horrible. Like, it's like every, on every. Like facet of filmmaking, it's like lowest common denominator. But I still had a blast. Yeah, I watched. Uh, I think I watched Blood Diner with them. <laughs> it was like <laughs> I was like, oh man, this is crazy. I've never seen they this, but cuts. yeah, they, they do. do. They but, do. But yet, there's films like Maximum Overdrive that are so oh, bad man. that they're good. That that I have awesome. Maximum Overdrive on VHS right behind me. I love that movie. <laughs> I just rewatched it because I'm I'm rereading Night Shift, which contains. Most of Stephen King's big early short stories, like Children of the Corn, mm-hmm. trucks that they turned yeah. into Maximum Overdrive, sometimes they come back, t- uh, tons of different stuff. And so I, I, I rewatched Maximum Overdrive the other night, man. I was like, man, the ACDC soundtrack is killer in this, and uh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's 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 fun. It's just really dumb, but it's it's purposefully over the oh, top. Oh yeah, it's really yeah. stupid, but it's it's <laughs> memorable. That's the only one that Stephen King directed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So and he good. claimed to be coked out of his mind, coked the out of his brain. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Quote. This is what we're gonna do on this shot. So Ah, you can do this, you do this, you do this. All right, action, go. What's my motivation, sir? Well, this is the thing. I want you to just throw your hands up and just... Machine just, just called me an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Opening scene, so funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to end because we're almost at an hour here. Um, Cody's got wow, one... That flew by. Yeah, yeah. Man, it happens pretty quick. I mean, you know, we're at like 50, 52 minutes right now, so we're getting close. Um, uh, but Cody asks another good question. What's a horror movie that actually needs a remake, in your opinion? Ooh. I have an answer for that. Hmm. I and would like your answer for that. It's it's funny because this movie just came out, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I loved the premise of it so much, but the, I just did not like the way that. And it's a really low budget movie. It's called Bad Apples with Brie Grant, and I the premise now just this premise is so awesome. It's these two like teenage girls. They have these awesome looking masks on, and they go around on Halloween night, and any. And any time the lights are off, you know, because when you're in the neighborhood, if the lights are off, you can't go to get candy. They go and kill them people. Oh. 
And nice. I was like, yes, that is an awesome premise. But the I movie like itself is horrible. <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, so that's a good them. answer. Good answer. Okay. Bad, bad apples, you say. They should remake bad movies. They shouldn't remake good movies. Mm. That's true. Well, like movies with a promising present, a premise, like you said. Um, that, yeah. that just weren't executed correctly. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's right. actually that that I agree. I think that is that should that should be what people remake. Well, there is because stuff, you know there, there is stuff like They Live that I think has such a deep resounding message that would mean a whole lot more today in our current society in some ways with just how much crazier commercialism has become. And, well, and internet advertising and yeah. everything like that. But yeah, know, I think I would, if there's a if there's a different story to be told if there because of the current climate. Uh, yeah, I'd welcome a, 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 another a remake, but I guess you could say like the the original thing from Another World, for its time, was considered a really good movie. But then, the landscape of the 1980s is completely different from the 50s. Yeah. So, John, Car- thank God, John Carpenter made the thing because it's the greatest remake of all time. Yep, so. I agree. I think that that is my favorite horror movie of all time as well. So it's my number two. So, yeah. Oh, what was your number one? Halloween. Okay. Yeah, the original. Yeah, makes I'm sense. A, I'm a Halloween fanatic. Yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> I just love that remake of the Blob from the '80s so much, man. I mean, the Blob, the Fly, and the Thing are like the three greatest remakes. The ever Fly, ever yeah. Uh, uh, I haven't seen the remake of the Blob. I need to see that. Oh, it's, you haven't seen some, the '80s remake some of, of it? The best practical no, effects, man. Oh my god, that one's great. That one scared the shit out of me as a kid. That one's dude. gruesome, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, Damn, it's, yeah. check it out. The Blob really got me when I was young. Yeah, mm. the script was co-written by Frank Darabont. Actually. Oh shit, Sean oh, wow. reviews is here. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, you know what? Uh, yeah, we're we're just under an hour here. I think that's a good place to end it. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, take a moment to thank Lee once again for joining us. Yeah. Uh, the links to yeah. both his Drum Dums uh, YouTube channel and the Killer Flicks Facebook page are in the description box down below. Make sure you go subscribe to his channel. You'll be able to see uh, this nice guy, Review Meister, do all kinds of cool stuff. Because he is generally pretty positive about stuff. He, he'll let you know his gripes here and there, but... Um, you know, I like that. There's a whole lot of negativity out there. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I like that he kind of goes more towards positive, but he's, he doesn't shy away yeah. from the negative when he needs to. So, Thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So um, thank you again for joining us. I, I really do appreciate you taking the time, Lee. Oh, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. It was an honor. Awesome. Cool. Heck well, yeah. um, you know, hopefully we can get you on in the future doing something else. Uh, we, we are actually in the process of planning out our um grand horror debate we do something called the great horror debate on the channel and we're looking to start um branching out and doing inter-channel versions of the great horror debate where we select three to five topics you pick your answers we pick our answers and then we have like an impartial uh audience decide the winners uh by the end of the video yeah sounds fun i'd I'd be up for whatever you guys want to do awesome cool All right. Well, thank you guys very much for joining us. Uh, Once again, make sure you follow Lee at the Drum Dums link down below and join or, you know, uh, attempt to join the Killer Flicks Facebook page. Uh, We will not or he will not allow posers in. You must be an actual (laughs) horror fanatic. You got to be legit, yo. Too legit to quit. Oh, boy. All right. (laughs) All right. So until next time, you guys, I've been Cecil Laird. I'm Andrew Mercer. I'm Cece Von Slaughter. I'm Arch Bringer. Gracias. I've been Jaime. Fuego. We were once again joined by uh, Lee from Drum Dum. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow you on Twitter right now. Drum Drum Yep. On follow at Drum Dums on Twitter, Instagram, all all the social medias. Um, yep. So make sure you guys check him out. Thank you once again, Lee. But until next time, by the way, we always end these with uh, and remember, stay scared. So feel free to join us on that. Okay. Until okay, next awesome. time, you guys. Thank you very much for watching, and remember. Stay scared! Stay scared. <laughs> 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 First try, and we...